everyone, it's Ashley Cunningham here, and I'm really excited. I am going to be channeling Joan of Arc. Um, last week, or maybe it was like a week and a half ago, uh, I saw something about her on Facebook, and she immediately came straight in, and she wanted me to channel a message. So I did that, and I recorded it, and I posted it on my YouTube channel, and um, I uh, was able to kind of share that with everyone and people wanted to hear more from her. So uh, here we are and we are um, going to be listening to a message that she has. Um, she's been kind of uh, talking to me um, a little bit before I jumped on here. And um, uh, yeah, we're so also, whoops, excuse me. I didn't turn my volume down. Um, and we are also going to be taking a few questions tonight. So if you have some questions, yeah, Isabella, you can pop a question on if you want. Um, I will be taking some questions, but first we're going to hear from, um, Joan of Arc first, and then we'll dive into questions. So, um, let me kind of tune, uh, out a little bit and kind of get my mind rest in. And for those of you who are interested in um, following along, if you want to practice with me, um, you can call her in. And um, I'm noticing that she's coming in pretty strong through my back, straight into my heart chakra. And my heart chakra is all warm and fuzzy uh, with like warmness and um, just feels really good. And uh She's now pouring more energy into my heart chakra. And I also feel some energy on the crown of, um, in my crown chakra, so on the top of my head. You may feel some energy come in through your neck, your upper back, through your back, and your heart chakra. And she's putting a lot of energy in my ear now. She says, okay. Let's do this. Uh, she's very direct, which I appreciate. <laughs> I really like that about her a lot. Um, and she is saying, hello, everyone. Thank you for um, inviting me to join you tonight. Uh, thank you for um, hearing my original message and, again, wishing to connect. Um, we are in an interesting moment. Uh, where there's a lot of energy coming in. Um, it has died down the last few days here on Earth, but um, there will be more coming in throughout the rest of this year and increasing um, throughout the rest of this year. Uh, as many of you know, there has been lots of channel guidance around this, but I want to touch on uh, an element that uh, maybe doesn't always get called out when we are discussing um, increased energy. Um, there is often when we are anchoring more light within our vessel, within our lives, um, as humans, we are, and she's saying we, we are like, she's not a human, but we humans um, are uh, flooded with light when these spikes come in. Um, and she's saying, uh, embrace the change, get used to it, because this is going to be very frequent. Um, you need to have your um, coping tools, so your mechanisms for your self-care, for your energetic care, your boundaries established. Um, if for those empaths out there who are very giving, um, this is going to be potentially a rough time if you do not have those um, skills or mechanisms in place for yourself. Um, she's 
saying uh, this with, she's telling me, this is not meant um, to strike fear or to um, uh, cause concern. This is just um, a reminder to ensure that you are observing your energy. You are taking moments for self uh, love and self care, um, building rest into your schedule and not feeling guilty for stepping back when you need to step back. Um, there has been many things um, going on in all of your schedules, you, you know, the busy lives that humans um, cling to, um, especially in this modern society where there's so much going on, so much information, so much bombarding humans that um, taking a time to step back and rest uh, should be a priority. It is amongst all of your other um, priorities for your family, your work environment, um, your own development. Rest should be, um, uh, she's kind of showing me a picture. She's not saying exactly what rest should be, but she's showing me like, here's everything and here's self love and care and maintenance and taking rest and knowing when to step back. So it's on equal footing with everything. Uh, balance is necessary and key to move forward. If you are out of balance, say you are pushing yourself um, to complete a project or you're pushing yourself to just maintain um, a busy status quo, um, remember that as your minds race, as they remain busy, um, you um, are missing out on the opportunities of stepping back and allowing things to shift and change in um, many ways that we cannot bring about um, as humans. We can't bring about some things. We, we have free will um, and we can take action to step forward and go in certain directions and we always have choice, but there are some things that are in divine timing and um, striving so hard to um, uh, cling to things that you may once have felt were important, but as you awaken, things shift. Importance of more uh, materialistic things fade away. Um, it's more important to spend time with maybe your loved ones, um, spend time resting your mind, spending time out in nature. These will bring about balance. And these are some of the tools that you can use to help you navigate the changes that are coming um, in the energetic perspective in all of our lives, things are shifting. And this is an exciting time, um, but definitely, uh, if you are not aware when you are feeling an increase of energy coming in, um, if you're not aware of what you can do to mitigate some of the uh, ascension symptoms or um, some of the, the uh, side effects of all of this energy coming in, especially when it's in conjunction with like full moons like we had just last week, that was crazy, <laughs> really, really tough to get through. Um, and especially if you're doing a lot of spiritually based activities such as channeling or um, a lot of activities that uh, require your energy and focus uh, for long periods of time. So it's really important to make sure that you are in balance and um, there are many tools out there. Um, and she's just saying like this, this needs to be a focus for you. Um, assess whether or not, um, oh, this is kind of interesting. She's kind of showing me like, you know how there's like emergency checklists if there's like something 
like say an earthquake happens or some sort of natural disaster strikes, you're supposed to be prepared with like a checklist of things that you have on hand, things that you can do, like your emergency plan, like where are you gonna meet your family if your house is on fire, you know, like there's plans in place that you can set. And this is um, very important um, to have that kind of plan in place for yourself. How are you going to recharge? How are you going to maintain your balance and your energy um, as well as helping um, yourself uh, helps others. So uh, you set a good example for your children um, for having solid boundaries and maintaining um, your calm and peace and uh, for your loved ones, not only children, but your loved ones, family, friends, coworkers, um, embracing that and also ensuring that you are um, really, uh, you know, expressing self-love and taking care of yourself and stepping back when you need to. Um, and she's just saying uh, there are many who don't really um, plan or include rest in um, the grand scheme of like maybe their month or their life <laughs> um, or their year or, you know, plan those vacations, go on fun trips, do things that bring joy into your life that maybe will allow you to step back a little bit um, and allow you to kind of recharge. And she's saying um, that that was her core message for tonight. There are many um, who need this. Um, if you need to uh, understand more uh, hard skills, uh, such as grounding or diet or, um, or other mechanisms such as meditation, she's encouraging you to uh, research, uh, go online, and use discernment, check in with yourself to see if this feels good or not when you're reading information. You, <clears throat> excuse me, you can always check out my YouTube channel um, or Kristen Davies' YouTube channel or Gloria Rice's YouTube channel or um, Paul, uh, oh, sorry, Paul, I'm totally blanking on your name, your last name, Paul's YouTube channel, I will link it. Um, uh, yeah, so there's many, many, or at other YouTube channels, there's many uh, YouTube channels out there that have a lot of information on this content. But I know me, Kristen, Gloria, Paul, um, do a lot of conversations and we talk a lot about that. So definitely check it out. Um, and uh, yeah, she's saying now let's move on to questions. And I'm seeing questions over here, but I am gonna look at my phone, just a heads up guys, so I can see your guys' names. Um, Polly is, Polly Pullman is asking, does Joan have any guidance for me? Um, Polly, Joan is just, uh, saying, um, She's just showing me a straight arrow. You're just like on your on um, a straight path. You're on the path, and uh, there's there's um, nothing that will deviate for you. You've made choices, and your team is guiding you. Your spiritual, like your angelic team, as well as your starseed family team, um, they're all together. And uh, there's more to explore and more options, but um, you are. Uh, on the path that you're um, meant to be going down and you're doing really, really well. As she's saying, remember to um, uh, go within and take some time for yourself um, wherever you can. And she's stepping back on that. So um, that was for you, Polly. I hope that resonates. Uh, Brenda is asking, any guidance for from Joan of Arc for me? Uh, Brenda, she just said, uh, live your truth. Um, you know who you are. 
you know um, what you're about, you know um, you, who you are as a being, um, soul, love, and light. So embrace it, live that truth, and just move forward, shining your light. Move forward with confidence and your head held high. And she's showing um, her, like, sticking her chin out a little bit. So, um, yeah, she's saying, that's it. That's all you need to know. At this time, um, you know who you are. And you're. she's saying, you're about it. But that is a reminder to continue to keep keep your confidence and um, just know who you are as a being. So I hope that resonates for you. Um, Isabella is wondering if it's time to move out of her house right now. Other uh, guidance about who is with me helping me with this major lift life shift. So is it time? <laughs> is in this moment, um, is it in this moment right for you to move forward with moving out of your home? It would be a positive change for you, Isabella. You determine the, the moment, the time. There are act some action steps that you may need to take, like kind of wrapping things up um, and getting everything prepared. But um, if you feel that this is a good moment for you to move forward, she's just applauding you. She's not um, saying you have to do it because you don't have to do anything. Um, but she is uh, highlighting that it would be good for you if you wanted to move at this time. And um, she's saying, uh, she's getting, a, putting a lot of energy in my gut. Like, you know, in your gut that it's time to move forward. Um, or like, you're feeling it, you're sensing it. So definitely um, uh, go with that. Trust it. Because your angel teams and um, many beings are, help, are supporting you. A lot of Ascended Masters. Um, anyone that you've called in, Isabella, anyone that's really resonating with you right now, they've definitely been around. Um, Joan of Arc might not be one of them, but she's saying Mother Mary. Whew, and Mother Mary, on that, my whole heart chakra just expanded really wide. So Mother Mary for you, for sure, um, is around. So definitely call on her. Alex is asking, oh, just saying hello. Hi. <laughs> nice to see you here, Alex. Thanks for joining. Um, uh, Bonnie, really good question. So she asked, Joan of Arc, is everyone on the planet absorbing this light? Or if we are a lower vibe, does it not penetrate us? Um, she's saying, no, everyone is absorbing light, raising in vibrational frequency, whether they realize it or recognize it. Um, there is um, an increase for people who um, maybe are actively embracing it um, or are awakened. And for everyone's pace, it's uh, definitely um, unique. So if you are um, pushing or taking action steps to anchor in more light, to take care of yourself to ground, to pay, be mindful, um, and to you know connect to spirit um, and live in resonance with that. Um, it you know you would be. She's showing that it's like you're a shoe in, like it's definite that you're anchoring a lot of light for people who are of a lower vibe, um, who may not be awakened. Um, may not be recognizing these shifts. They're still happening um, within themselves and externally, like um, higher vibrational frequency is just kind of settling in here. Um, so we're all just kind of getting acclimated to it. Um, but there are some people who are, are awakened or more aware. They're like getting more um, because they're basically ready for it and they're making the choice to anchor in that light. That's a key, um, uh, the uh, term that just popped into my head from work, key performance indicator. 
Um, not really a KPI. That's not really a KPI, but um, she's just kind of laughing at me now. Like, oh my gosh, nerd joke. Um, but she's uh, just saying that um, uh, choice is key. And uh, moving forward, um, the more you make the choice, the more you're active in that, the more you're going to anchor and um, also be able to cope because you have the skills um, and awareness of what's going to make you feel better, like grounding. Um, I keep going to that because that's um, definitely a surefire way when you're feeling kind of lightheaded or having a lot of ascension symptoms. Um, connecting with nature in a lot of different ways is really important and um, it just kind of levels you out and stabilizes you very quickly. Um, so definitely um, grounding is important. Um, and that's a really good question. Thanks, Bonnie. Um, Brenda is asking, would love to have guidance from Joan of Arc for myself this busy time. Also would love to know what my guardian angel's name is. Can you help me with this? Thank you, Ashley and Joan of Arc. That's for Brenda. Your male guardian angel, um, Brenda, has stepped forward. And he's saying, um, you can call me Adam. So Adam is your guardian angel's name. That's cool. And um, uh, Joan of Arc and Adam both have something to say. Um, there's a lot of love surrounding you, Brenda, uh, recognize that, um, ask them to come in. So your angels, your guardian angels, angels, send in masters, you can call on them and, uh, they're going to be there and definitely, um, want to connect. And your angel team is like, they're itching to dig in there and, um, uh, help support in any way that you need it. So just remember to keep asking them for um, help and guidance and help the, have them help you uh, take care of things in your life and uh, kind of, you know, direct um, how you like your, your life, um, how you want it to go. And um, they're also saying you are very busy, very busy. And um, remember to um, calm your mind and take uh, some time to meditate or clear your thoughts. And then you can replace them or direct them to a higher vibrational frequency. So you're um, even more uh, quickly receiving that abundance that you're asking for and pulling in and um, uh, seeing the changes that you want in your life. So they're just kind of doing a group hug now with you, uh, Brenda. And, um, uh, Adam, he's very, very nice. He's coming in. He's right here on my cheek, um, right here. And he's like really warm and, um, he's just, uh, showering lots and lots of love. And, uh, he's just really happy to connect with you and, um, keep, um, reaching out to him. And he's being very generous and nice and telling me I'm doing a good job. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I hope that resonates, Brenda. Um, thanks, Karen. I'm happy I'm here, too. I feel like I haven't been on live with you guys in a while. Um, I was just in um, my Anchoring the Light with your Starseed Family course, and it was awesome. Um, but that lasted for about a week, and it was pretty cool. There was like so many cool things that happened. Um, I can't wait to schedule the next one for those of you who um, didn't have an opportunity to join me. Um, I will be scheduling one for later, probably in the summertime. Uh, so look out for that. Uh, that's gonna be pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, I have kind of missed channeling here in my group. So I'm happy to be here. <laughs> um, Megan is asking, is there a reason she comes up almost every time when I draw my Ascended Master deck? Is there a message for me? Is there a specific way I can know it's her? Thank you. <laughs> um, Megan, she's saying, if you're pulling the card almost every time, um, that's definitely me. That's her sign to you that she's there. And uh, she wants you to connect to her. She wants you to get curious and ask her questions. And uh, she's right there with you. 
and uh, she's really uh, wanting to connect with you and um, provide support. And she's saying there are um, several things in your life, Megan, that um, would benefit from her guidance and energy. And um, she's trying to give you, um, in, not instructions, but signals saying, hey, I'm here with you pulling her every single time you're using that deck. So definitely pay attention to that. Um, and for that goes for any um, Ascended Master. If you're using an Ascended Master deck and almost every single time you're pulling a certain card, like after you shuffle, you put it away, you come back to it, you reshuffle, you're still pulling that card, that would be time definitely. Like after like two or three times, even I would be like, okay, you can hit me over the head um, with this. What's going on? How's it going? Like, what would you like to say to me? How do we connect? Um, and then I would just start asking them questions. And then I would start calming my mind, quieting my mind. And um, if I, if you, Megan, don't um, feel her energy or um, if you're not sure of the signs that you are getting, make sure you ask for clarifying signs. Um, and she's saying that um, she's present with you now if you wish to reach out to her. And you'll feel her in your body um, as a, just an energy, you know, like on your shoulder. I don't know if like I'm getting more, um, I'm seeing her like on one side like and touching your shoulder. I don't know if that's going to happen later when you ask her to come in or if she's doing that right now, she's saying yes. And both, um, she will come in on your side. And so you will know, um, how to connect or that she's there, I guess. And I'm asking her now if there's anything else that she wants to impart with you, Megan. Um, she's just kind of saying, I'm using the cards. You can use the cards if you need, but um, you you sense her around and she's she's there. So just start start asking questions, Megan. Uh, Karen is asking, please ask Joan if I'm on the right path to serve the archangels and ascended masters. Um, Joan is saying, uh, Karen, you are on your path, which is uh, the right path. Um, you do not need to wish to serve the Ascended Masters or the Archangels um, as they're all on the same team. We're all working together. And um, as a light worker, you are bringing forward the light through your various joys, interactions, connections with spirit, and uh, connections with humans and having fun and shining your light and sharing your thoughts and opinions and personality with everyone around you um, and doing things that you feel guided to do um, to bring forward more light and love. If you wish to serve anything, serve love um, because we are all love. We are all of love and light. We are all for, we are all one. We are all created by the same uh, energy, God, Source, Love and Light energy, however you wish to call it. Um, ascended Masters and Archangels are here to help guide us through our path um, as humans and as other beings. And on the other side of the veil, when we pass away from this experience and we move on in our energy, we reconnect with our higher self, um, we can connect with them still and we can hang out and talk with them and uh, learn and grow um, from them as well as uh, from our experiences here on Earth. And um, we are always expanding and increasing and developing um, and uh, she's saying that there is no need um, 
to think of yourself as like serving. Um, I think don't think she really likes that phrase. So she says, if you wish to serve, serve love and share love and love freely with um, all of the people around you. And um, uh, she's saying sprinkle love throughout your life in any way and always that you can. Um, and this will support uh, more light coming to the planet. This will support Gaia. This will support your soul because it's going to make you happy. And um, you're going to feel guided on this path because um, that is part of your path. And uh, she's just applauding you, saying that you are um, a very loving being of, uh, yeah, definitely sharing and uh, shining your light. And so she's um, really happy that you're here um, on earth and doing your work. And uh, yeah, she's stepping back now. So I hope that resonates with you. Um, Karen, uh, Angel is asking, would love guidance for my son. My son needs this. He has a court date coming up. Thank you, Joan of Arc and Ashley. Okay. Sorry, I'm laughing. I'm looking at Paul's comment. Thank you, Paul, for being understanding. I totally blocked your name. Uh, yeah, so I appreciate that. Um, so court date, sorry, for Angel's son, uh, Joan of Arc, what do you have to say about um, what's going to happen or what guidance can uh, support him through this process? She's saying that this is um, a trying time for sure in his life. Um, going within, quieting the mind, um, reflection, and uh, just um, she's just saying going within, like really making me feel like um, that there's going to be a lot of support uh, for him. And going within is going to allow him to kind of step out of the situation that he's in. I mean, that's, you know, kind of a scary thing, having to deal with the justice system and courts and, you know, appointments that you have to go to and attorneys. And it's very overwhelming. And um, it's like a tornado or a hurricane of chaos um, swirling around him. And uh, he needs to go within and kind of step back and... Um, seek that calmness that um, is within his mind and his uh, heart chakra. She keeps pointing to my heart chakra and um, uh, understanding that everything's going to be okay. However it plays out, however things go, um, he will be able to move forward in his life. Uh, it may be difficult. Uh, even if things went well, it, it's going to be difficult to um, kind of get over the experience, kind of heal from it. Um, but no matter what happens, uh, everything is going to be okay. And he can ask for help, connect to his uh, angels, um, connect to any ascended masters that resonate with him, his starseed families there with him and around him. Um, definitely he can reach out and uh, ask for help. Um, and he... Um, they will provide it to him. And uh, yeah, she's just saying, she's just showing like um, a lot of things are happening. Clearly, he definitely, uh, you know, has uh, a try. He's in a trying time right now, but I'm um, stepping back and um, taking a beat to kind of quiet his mind, kind of, uh, not focus on everything that's going on. I mean, he's going to have to face it and move through it and deal with it, but being able to take some time to kind of shift um, and look at things, um, maybe different things from a higher vibrational perspective um, to kind of kind of 
quiet himself and uh, calm himself down and get through the situation um, in the best possible way. Because no matter what, I mean, that's going to suck having to go through it, but um, he can definitely calm and kind of remove some of that stress and handing off a lot of the fear and the stress that kind of comes with situations like that is really important. So knowing that he can ask his angels, he can ask Archangel Michael for protection and support for removing lower vibrational frequencies from his life. It's going to be really important and it will allow him to kind of move through the situation uh, with, um, more calmness and less fear and uh, anxiety and stress. So definitely uh, encourage that. Um, and I'm asking her now if that's all. And she's saying, yes, that is it. Okay. Um, Anita, question, how do you uh, advise me to rest if it doesn't come to me naturally and it is dis difficult for me to feel restful? Okay, that's a great question. She's kind of like, all right, this is a good one. Um, uh, Anita, there are many ways you can rest. She's putting in my head immediately grounding is a top, top way to do that, um, to rest. Um, oh, she's backing me up a little bit. Um, so first and foremost, to um, kind of identify when do we need to rest, I, we can do two things. We can do it preemptively. So knowing, okay, I'm pushing myself a bit here. I'm going to continue on. But in an hour, I'm going to take a break. Or um, in over the weekend or for the next few days, I'm going to um, just kind of take it easier, not push myself so hard to like run around and do a ton of errands. I'll kind of get them prepared and then take a break um, and just kind of relax or, you know, as much as you can. And so, uh, definitely, um, looking at it kind of ahead of time, preemptively knowing when you're pushing yourself really hard, um, it might be hard, like you say, to feel restful or kind of identify when you need to do that. And she's saying, um, definitely setting aside time, um, in your schedule to do this, to, to use different tools to rest is going to be important, especially if you haven't done that in a really long time. It's going to feel really weird um, uh, until you get more used to stepping back and taking that time. So she's recommending scheduling moments, scheduling dates where you're like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to rest, however that looks. And she's saying, now, um, tools that you can use to rest would be to ground. So getting out into nature, um, leaning against trees, um, don't, going on a hike, uh, sitting on the beach if you're near the ocean is a really, really great um, way to ground. Um, also, just connecting is through gardening. Maybe gardening is something that really brings you joy and doesn't um, stress you out. You know, you want to focus on things that are going to be really relaxing. Um, but grounding is really great, um, through gardening. So you can try that or just kind of hanging out in your backyard, you know, sitting in the grass if it's warm and, um, just taking time to get outdoors. Um, that's definitely a really fast way to ground and to kind of create a space in your energy to allow you to kind of relax and let loose and hand off that stress. Um, She's also saying if you can't get outside, say it's snowing outside and it's freezing and you don't want to be outside, you can um, actually uh, do an Epsom salt bath. So you can um, get into a full bath and have Epsom salt and some nice warm water. Um, maybe bring a book with you or listen to some really relaxing music. Nothing too um, upbeat or strenuous or um, you know, heavy with really um, low vibe lyrics. It's really more like um, maybe some classical music or there's great meditation videos online. I gravitate to the ones that sound like water with some like maybe music in the background. So I really like that kind of stuff. 
Um, she's also saying meditation is really key in de-stressing and relaxing. And meditation can look different for different people. She's saying, uh, she's showing like washing dishes or um, uh, going on a walk, just walking around. Nothing too strenuous, nothing like you have to make it to the grocery store um, or um, you have to go like, you know, to an appointment. It's more like take some time to rest and relax, doing things that um, maybe allow you to tune out and not really um, be super focused in on what you're doing physically um, is really great. If you're not able to or you haven't felt comfortable or you don't really um, feel like you want to just sit and be quiet or you can lay down um, and be quiet and just kind of quiet your mind and focus your mind on your breathing. Um, she's also showing uh, taking time to journal or to do something creative um, that's inspiring and is resonating with you. Um, and oh, this is interesting. She's showing me um, a time where I was sitting on my computer um, and I had taken a ton of photos and um, I was like, okay, I wanna get these edited. I wanna do this, X, Y, Z, do all this stuff. And um, the, t the day just got away from me and I literally sat there having a good time. I didn't feel like tired or bogged down um, or anything. I was just like jamming out to music and I was editing photos for like eight hours. <laughs> and I was like, holy crap. I just thought I was there for like an hour and I look up and it's like already nighttime and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> like where did the time go? I was having so much fun. So focusing on things like this and uh, bring in that creative energy and let you release some, you know, maybe there's some emotions that come through in your art or in your writing, doing certain things like that, that kind of just let it out. Also um, watching high vibrational movies or TV shows that just make you feel good and um, have a good time. And uh, so, yeah, she's just enjoying that. Um, sorry, I'm a little distracted. I lost the question. Um, so that was for Anita. Sorry, I lost it there. Um, so yeah, she's saying there are a multitude of things that you can do to address, um, like getting into that space to allow yourself to rest. Um, but it really is up to you and it's a free will choice. So if you're not taking that choice to rest, that's where you need to start is making a choice, being mindful and saying, I need to rest. And um, then following up and setting that boundary and not saying yes to a bunch of things or, you know, getting convinced to go to a party, um, you know, on the weekend when you just want to like relax and do nothing. Um, so definitely think about that. See how you can incorporate those things into your daily life. Just build out an hour and see how how it goes um, to explore things that will recharge you. And um, I think that would actually be a really fun thing to do, like um, almost like an experiment. And Joan is saying um, that there are many people out there who do this and have um, guided people on how to do this, but um, taking a month and dedicating one full month to doing new things to kind of discover how um, you resonate or how what things bring you joy and happiness. So just kind of setting aside, okay, for a month, I'm going to be really active in identifying what things do I want to do? How do I want to maybe try out all these different strategies to rest? what makes you feel the most rested when you're done at the end of the day. Um, and she's also saying you can always try something like that. Um, you can always ask for help in, uh, in guidance from your team um, to guide you to, to rest. But uh, she is saying that if you don't carve out time or make conscious efforts to do so, um, rest will catch up with you. So you will get sick or you will be put into an opportunity where you need to rest um, and take care of yourself. So uh, definitely 
Be proactive is her nugget there. <laughs> um, Barbara is asking, which archangel did you interact with the most during your incarnation? Which one assisted you the most to accomplish your life purpose? Um, she's saying Archangel Michael was key. There were several, um, but she's saying Archangel Michael. Um, that's a good question. Honestly, I haven't done many uh, or much research on her full life. I just kind of know her loosely from, um, you know, like the movies. I know that they're probably not even like very close, but um, from just a few things that I've seen about her, she's fascinating. And for a person who now in, you know, modern society is able to just openly channel um, we made a lot of progress compared to where she was at, where, you know, she was connecting with spirit and sharing messages and, um, you know, following a guided life. And she had a lot of trials and tribulations in relation to that. So um, that's definitely one thing that um, when I first connected with her a few weeks ago, um, really struck me to my core, like, wow, like, you know, I live in a day and age where I can freely share this skill and share the guidance that's coming through and be supportive of others. And I'm not fearful for my life. <laughs> so that's great. Um, and she's saying, yes, that was part of, um, she had that role. Um, she, um, was starting to usher in some of that energy. And since she's been on the other side um, as Joan of Arc and this that energy and that um, uh, persona, um, she's done a lot of work with a lot of people over, um, well, over time, but since her inc that incarnation of her um, to now where we're at. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, that's really, really cool. And if any of you are interested, if you, I know there's lots of channelers here. Um, if there's people who are interested in developing their channeling ability or interested in um, working with Joan, she is saying, call me in. Let's work together. Let's um, build confidence. Let's work and practice because um, she really supports people who are following their truth. Truth is key. And, um, sharing and spreading the light is um, definitely a uh, part of her goal and her overall, um, how she's helping the team, basically, how she's interacting. She's part of the team, you know, all the angels, archangels, ascended masters, all these beings, they're all on the same team. They're all anchoring light here. They're helping us. They're helping um, in many different ways. And um, she's part of that. So uh, she's saying, uh, let's do it, <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, Savannah is asking, does Joan have any guidance for me at this time right now? I feel like I'm at a crossroads now in this moment. Oh, Savannah, she's, um, yeah, there's a lot of like, um, not heavy energy, but just kind of like stressed energy almost. Like you're kind of, like you said, at a crossroads, you need to make some decisions and um, there's just some changes that are happening in your life. She's saying, embrace those changes, go within. Um, this is really cute. She's posting like, um, I don't know if you have access to like a whiteboard or maybe some poster board um, she's just showing me like a big whiteboard and she has a marker and she's like dividing up the board um, into the various number of choices or directions that you may be debating. Like you may be having a, um, she's saying, for example, like a career choice. Um, she's saying lay it all out and then ask yourself or check in with your gut. Use your gut. Um, your uh, gut is really a key um, uh, key indicator as to what resonates with you and what doesn't. She's saying also to ask your team for support and guidance. Um, if you have a direction in which you wish to take, or you know what a direction you don't want to take, um, focus on high vibrational, 
um, ideas, thoughts, actions that can take you in the direction in which you, um, you know, once you've done that gut check, which direction you need to go. She's saying, be steadfast. It may not be um, clear right now. And she's showing like a car driving down the highway. And you know, sometimes like when you have your lights on, you still can't see very far because it's all foggy and you can only see like a little bit ahead of you. Um, she's showing like um, uh, just going steady, go at a steady pace, um, stay your course, know within that you are on your path She's giving a thumbs up. You are on your path. And um, do the gut check. And then ask your team for help. And just continue to do that. If you need to do that twice, three, four times a day, please do so. She's saying it. Do, they don't care however many times you ask for help or support or ask them to come in. Ask them to come in really, really close and um, provide assurance or signs to you that you are being supported um, because you are and you're on your path and uh, you will pass that crossroad. Whew, she's putting a lot of energy into this. And she's just showing you standing there with light anchoring straight through your crown chakra into your heart, all the way through your body, you are supported. So know that. And she's stepping back now. I hope that resonates with you, Savannah. Um, definitely sending lots of love your way. Um, David is, uh, oh, this is interesting, David. So you're asking for a message from Joan, but she, you're also saying, I feel I'm starting a path. That's cool. Okay. Um, David, she's showing me your path and showing me, um, kind of what you're starting, like maybe a project or a direction. And she's saying they're all one. It's all one. So you're on your path. You're still going down your path. It's just adding uh, maybe little turns and a little change to it. Um, but it's all a part of your path. And I'm just getting like go for it, confirmation for you, um, and definitely move forward. Make sure checking in um, with your team and yourself um, and your body, just making sure things still feel good as you're checking in on this new uh, venture. She's saying a venture um, that you are pursuing. Cool. Okay. So I hope that resonates with you. Uh, Marlene is saying, I am listening to your life uh, story on CD. What do you think of it? Written by Mark Twain through court documents. <laughs> She's saying, um, uh, it's, it is what it is. Like it is um, uh, the court documents, you know, there are facts to that. Um, and definitely there are elements that um, resonate and describe her life. But um, she's saying, she's showing me like her body or like maybe like a light being version of her body. So like kind of expanded out. And um, she's saying that um, really those documents and the, the overall story is just a fraction of who she was, how she experienced life, um, how things felt, how the world was at that time. Um, it's not, uh, it's not uh, far off the mark for like the higher level stuff, but um, there's just so much more to it. And she's saying, can you uh, explain who you are in your entire life and, um, everything that you experienced and all the depth of you as a being of love and light in one uh, 
a few pages of that uh, whole whole novel of of who you are. So um, she's definitely saying, you know, she's not like knocking it. She's saying, yeah, like there's some things in there. You know, it's it's pretty like the documents and stuff are what they are. She's saying, um, do be mindful that um, in those times uh, it was much easier to uh, to frame things in ways that it would be uh, much more difficult to do so in this day and age, especially with the access to uh, information and access to like interviews. And she's just showing me like crazy images of the internet. If in this day and age, um, there's a lot of uh, attention and light shown through on certain situations such as, um, she's saying a modern Joan of Arc um, would have to go through. Um, there's just many, uh, it's just different. It's just a different time frame. So it's hard to compare, she's saying, but um, yeah, she's much more than that small part of her life. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, I only have a few more minutes left. So I'm gonna take a uh, last few questions. And uh, Faye is asking, um, is there a message for me, please? Thank you. Faye, I'm getting, um, make sure that you're playing more. Have more fun. Do as many fun things in a day as you can. And if you can't, um, you know, of course, just upend your entire life and go do everything that you want to do. Uh, you know, people have to work and, you know, do things that, um, like take care of your family and, you know, live your life. But she's saying, um, make sure you're having fun. Um, always try and laugh as much as you can. And, um, she's saying, um, incorporate like jokes. I'm getting a lot of like emphasis on jokes, like not pranks on people, but like, there are like joke books out there that you can buy and you can just like read jokes or tell people jokes. Um, you don't have to go that far if you don't want. There's also the internet so you can look jokes up um, or, you know, just start conversations where you're just cracking jokes, having a good time with people. Um, she's just showing that you just need to laugh more, kind of let loose more and have more fun. Um, and that's just going to lighten everything up and uh, you can move forward and just kind of, um, approach things from that perspective um, as, okay, how am I going to have fun in this moment or in this experience? And uh, things will shift for you. Always focusing on the higher vibrational uh, elements. Uh, laughter is a really powerful tool. And um, she's saying that um, it's a good medicine. And uh, so you should definitely try and have more fun um, as much as possible and maybe learn some jokes. <laughs> um, I'm just thinking of um, at my work, there's a few people who've purchased um, like really funny questions. There's like 3000 questions to ask your friends or your coworkers. And sometimes in meetings, we start off the meeting asking a really funny question. Um, and uh, there was like one uh, book that my coworker had where it was like, would you rather basically, but um, it's, it was just really, really funny. So thinking about things like that, just having like open conversations with people in ways that maybe you don't typically get to do. Um, maybe it's like your work environment or the where you're at, you know, it doesn't always allow for um, super fun engagement. Um, but She's saying, focus on that. So I hope that resonates. Um, that was a lot. And okay, so I'm looking for one final question for Joan. Um, Okay, so I'm seeing one more question here. 
I do apologize. I, there's a lot of questions here that I'm not able to get to um, tonight. Um, hmm. Yeah, Archangel Michael is great um, to have on the battle as an ally to have on the battlefield. That's for sure. Okay, I saw a really cool question here. Um, Brenda's asking, are there any crystals that can help with more light finding us? <laughs> she kind of gave a cheeky question. Um, any crystal, it would work. Um, uh, she's saying, in all seriousness, there are some crystals that really do help um, us ground, help us uh, kind of open up a little bit more um, can move us in ways that maybe other crystals or gemstones or rocks, if you want to call them that, um, uh, definitely may not be able to do. And it's going to be different for all of us, but she's highlighting rose quartz is really awesome. The quartz family, she's kind of showing me all the different colors of quartz, definitely is um, helpful. Um, she's saying a lot of energy can move through them pretty quickly. Um, so you can get um, uh, uh, kind of a transfer through uh, quartz crystals um, pretty fast and they also can help ground very quickly. Um, so those of you who are maybe feeling a little stressed or can't necessarily get outside because it's cold um, or to connect really directly with Gaia, um, crystals or gems are really, really great to use um, to do that as well. Um, she's also saying, um, just any kind of stone that you really resonate with. There are some that do certain things like Amazonite helps with dreams and remembering dreams and astral travel, if that's something that's interesting to you. Um, she's saying um, that there's, um, I'm, I'm thinking of the list of all the ones that I have. I use, uh, I make necklaces for grounding because sometimes when I channel, like I, I know that I need to ground more. So. I'm looking at it and lapis lazuli is really great for um, speaking your truth, shining your light through your opinions and sharing and being confident and sharing your truth with others is gonna be really helpful. And uh, she says, you all know I'm all about truth and I'm all about stepping forward and living a guided life. So she is definitely recommending lapis lazuli. Um, as a good stone to have if you want to hold on to that. There's lots of others. I'm looking at them now. Um, rose quartz and lapis. And um, she's also showing like um, tourmaline. There's various types of tourmaline that you can use to kind of um, get rid of a lower vibrational energy or low vibes from yourself, low thoughts and stuff. So that's helpful. And yeah, she's saying there's a lot out there. And I know um, a lot of people in Channeling with Love really enjoy crystals. So that's something that would be super cool. If you feel guided to share what your favorite, favorite crystal is um, to ground yourself, um, what's the one that you're really, really drawn to? And um, what is just one that you think everyone should be uh, should see because it's just really pretty? Share lots of pictures. Um, that would be really great um, right on the Channeling with Love uh, group wall. And um, I'll definitely be tuning in to see um, what you guys really like and which ones you connect with. Uh, those are the ones that are coming forward um, through Joan. Um, so thank you guys. And now I'm past the hour, so I will have to let you guys go. Thank you again for all of your awesome questions. And I do apologize for the ones I didn't get to. Uh, feel free to pop on. I have another live event coming up this month with Brother Ty. So if you want to ask questions um, with Brother Ty, definitely feel free to um, send questions his way. Uh, if you feel guided to do a full reading with me, um, definitely check me out at channelingwithlove.com. That's my uh, website down there below my name. And you can book a reading. I do full hour readings uh, where I record everything and you get to keep it. 
and uh, they're really fun and you get to ask any questions that you want. And um, I also do Starseed family readings. I just got done with the Starseed family class, but if you're really interested, um, you can book a reading with me and get to know your Starseed family as well. Um, and with that, thank you guys so much. Love and light to you. And uh, have a really good evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you're at in the world. See you guys.